The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Uh, Patty Hunter of uh, Patty's Page, and today my guest will be Dr. Alveda King, and we're going to be talking about pro life, aren't we? Absolutely. Hi, Patty. Hello, listeners and viewers. Now, and you've um, got a wonderful uh, technician running your camera. Yes, he's, he's a wonderful guy. He's my husband. Eh? He's cool. He's cool, man. Ooh. Um. You are starting a new campaign. Yes. Well, the campaign is not new, but what we did was to rebrand that name, Civil Rights for the Unborn, because when we started out, one of the things that I often say and still say is that a woman has a right to choose what she does with her body. Yeah. The baby is not her body. Where is the lawyer for the baby? How can the dream survive when we murder the children? So the baby has civil rights in the womb, and uh, there had to be an advocate and a voice for the baby and for the baby's mother. So we have aligned the mission and the name and the brand. And that's why we are now civil rights for the unborn. So how are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? Through the courts or? No, 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 not through the courts. We're going to continue the work that we've been doing, informing, educating, and activating the people of America and around the world as to the harmful impact of abortion we're also going to talk about the harmful birth control products that are linked to breast cancer and cervical cancer and strokes and heart attacks. Yeah. Uh, the, all of the information about the abortion taking the life of the child but often harming the mother, robbing the father of his own birthright and the generations that should follow the father. Now, we've been doing that for over 10 years here at Priests for Life. I've been pro-life since 19, 1983. That's 33 going on 34 years. Oh but uh, we're doing that work here at Priests for Life now, informing, educating, and activating. We teach people how to vote, how to uh, write to their elected officials, how to work with their local pregnancy care centers, how to pray out in front of abortion mills, how to uh, just inform and educate and act activate the community through social media and blogs and all of that. So that's the work that we do. That you're touring, doing this? I tour quite a bit. Uh, this year I cut back. I used to do about 60 to 80 trips a year. This year I'm expecting to do somewhere between 40 and 60. And then the following year, between 20 and 40. So, so each year I'm just kind of reducing, reducing that. Yes. But other people are taking over your position. The younger people, and I'm so excited about it. Everywhere I go, sometimes a third or half of the audience is 30 years old and younger. Uh -huh. That is so exciting to me. It's I said, cool. oh, wow, I don't have to burn out because they're going to light up. Take over. Going yeah. to take over. The young are, are, are they're awesome. I mean, they're actually starting to care. Uh, the parents, they were brought up to think abortion is normal because they, they, they were brought up during that generation, but the younger ones, they're becoming more aware that we are living at conception enough. And well, the baby boomers, I'm a baby boomer, I'm 65. Oh uh, the baby boomers, we were doing free love and get abortions and it's my body and I do what I want to do. But the babies were beginning, the younger ones began to get it and they say, wow, if you have bought me, I won't be here. If you had aborted me, I wouldn't be here. Let me rethink this. Yes. And I have so many uh, young people that I've mentored even. They're getting it. My own children, my six living children. I had two abortions and a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. But I did repent in 1983 when I was born again. And Jesus forgave me. The Lord healed me. Holy Spirit began to teach me the truth. 
and that's how I'm able to even join you uh, on this broadcast with truth. And so I do firmly believe that we will know the truth and the truth will make us free. I believe that. Yeah, uh, we love you. Love you as well. So um, did you see that article that I sent to you about Hillary Clinton, what she said? I didn't get a chance to print it off. You want to recap it for me? Because I've got a, I brought a little information to kind of share myself about Hillary Clinton. Yeah. And I'll, I'll share a little bit in a little bit. But just talk to me about the article a little bit, please. Well, basically she was trying to say that Planned Parenthood is doing a lot of good for everybody and she doesn't understand why, you know, we want to stop not taking care of women instead of talking about abortion is bad. Right. She was in the well, news. let me jump in, Patty, on that. Uh, Planned Parenthood does offer services, but they're very deceptive. For a long time, they would say that they offer mammograms and they mm. fight breast cancer. Well, they do not offer mammograms. If you went in to ask for a uh, mammogram and plan. Planned Parenthood, about 98% of them will refer you somewhere else. They did not, they're not in the business of offering mammograms. Uh, a lot of times the concept, contraceptives that they provide and the condoms are faulty and the ladies get pregnant anyway and come back to them to get an abortion. They're the largest abortion provider in America, so even if that is only a small percentage of abortions that they do, they do enough for there to be over 60 million abortions legally performed in America since 1973. So Planned Parenthood just makes up a lot of things and pretends to do well. And, there, and the thing about it, there are real health clinics, yeah. healing centers that <laughs> actually heal people. Yeah. Planned Parenthood helps to kill people. The, uh, there are other places that do not offer abortion and uh, they heal people. How about the Republican Party? They're starting to change a little bit here in Indiana. They're trying to not pass uh, House Bill 1337. They're voting on it tonight. They're trying to include uh, disabled children to be aborted, like uh, Down syndrome and that. They were able to do that successfully for several years when abortion first became uh, legal in America through Roe versus Wade, a lot of the Down syndrome babies were aborted, especially as ultrasound began to develop and various tests that they could do to determine that the baby may or may not have uh, some challenges. And so, but people are now fighting back about that and saying that human beings should be treated as, as such and not murdered. Equal. And so we are really working hard on that. You know, I'm glad that you came, phoned through via Skype. It was so great to see you. I don't know how many more minutes we have left. We have About two minutes. Two, two or three minutes. Two or three minutes. I'd like to thank you, my dear. You're precious in my eyes. And I wanted to share this really quick. Uh, we have a Meet the Candidates for United States President 2016 that I prepared for uh, people that I minister to. It's yes. not a priest for life document at all. No. But uh, Secretary Hillary Clinton is a liberal feminist who denies civil rights of the unborn, supports the LGBT gay agenda, supports suppressed religious freedom in the United States, supports illegal immigration, supports abortion on demand up to nine months with millions in taxpayer dollars to abortion providers, supports race relations, social security reform, environment, and economic reform. Now, people will say, well, I've got to vote for somebody, and it's only Hillary or Bernie, because if you are a registered Democrat and you live in a city where the primary is closed, mm -hmm. they're going to give you a Democratic ballot. But when you get there, just say, now, if you've already voted in the primary, when you get to the general, you can vote for anybody. It's not against the law. For a Democrat to vote as an independent or vote for a Republican or another party. It's not against the law for a Republican to vote as an independent or a Democrat. People can vote. This is America. We have the liberty to vote for those people that we desire. If you get to the polls and they say, you're a Democrat, we're not going to let you vote for a Republican unless you sign and tell us you're a Republican, then you tell them that's not the law. 
Yes. And so please investigate and explore and find out what your rights as a voter are. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. We love you. And thank okay. you so much for coming on to my show, Patty's Page. Thank you, Patty. I hope to see you here in Fort Wayne sometime. Do come. I will try. And we will see you again when something like this happens. So uh, I enjoy talking with you. God bless you and all your viewers. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello, this is Patty Hunter on my show, Patty's Page. I'm here at Ascension Lutheran Church and School. To my right is Principal Mary Eifert. Just, hello. How hello. Are you? Nice to see you. Thank you. Well, I'm glad that I'm here. And uh, we just want to know a little bit about the school and okay. how you became principal and everything like that. Sure. So, um, where are you from originally? I grew up just outside of Detroit in the city of Warren. Mm -hmm. um, lived there until I went to college. So, uh, got the feel of a big city and a small town, small feel as well. So what did you major in? When I went to college, I was an elementary education major with um, concentrations in speech and drama and English. And what was your first job? My first real... Many moons ago. Many moons ago, like in high school first no, job? No, no, no. No, after teaching, at, when I got out. Yeah. Um, my first position was sixth grade position at Bethlehem Lutheran in Kennewick, Washington. Oh, that's way mm -hmm. away. It is, yes. So you've been moving to several different places in the country? Or? Yes, we've lived in Washington State, uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Texas, and now Indiana. So what positions led you up to being a principal here at Ascension? Um, I'm, middle school, I'm a middle school teacher by trade, and when we went to Texas, there were much few, many fewer Lutheran schools. Okay. Um, so the first year we were there, I was in a Catholic school for a year. And then our church school had a position as assistant principal and middle school teacher. So I did that for a couple of years. Yeah. Then the principal retired, <clears throat> and they struggled to find a replacement. So I became the interim principal for the year. So um, what was your qualifications to be here? I didn't have any. Oh, um, honestly, really I didn't. Yes. When they asked me to be interim, I clearly stated I'd be happy to do it as they continued the call process. Um, then they asked me to apply to be principal, and I clearly noted all of the things that I didn't have to be a principal, um, but they still desired me to. And in, the, or in Texas, um, the Lutheran schools are not tied to the state nearly as much as they are in Indiana mm -hmm. um, and so it was possible to be principal and so they asked me to and I, I said no multiple times until they finally twisted my arm and I said yes and that's what I've been doing ever since. Who was your mentor in this? Who helped you along to become a, a solid principal? Um, I've had a lot of great role models over the years. While in Texas, we they paired me up with another principal from another Lutheran school um, who I asked a lot of questions of. Um, so it, it was a lot of people, um, but also I'm, I'm an organized person, and so I just ask questions of anybody who I think is going to help at the time. So it works. So how did you land here? Um, because our family is from the Midwest, mm -hmm. um, after being 10 years in Texas, we decided it was time to get closer to home. Mm -hmm. So um, the Lutheran schools have a call process, and I've always said I'm open to wherever the Lord leads. Um, and because there's a principal shortage at the moment, uh, I is. have... There is, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I had I actually had several interviews um, for places across the country in the last three or four years mm -hmm. before we moved up here um, and was waiting for the right right place to come along. Um, not necessarily, didn't have to be location-wise, although the Midwest was definitely a, a strong choice. Um, it was more about where my talents would be best suited and where and my what family... Are talents? What are your talents? Uh -huh. Tell me about it, girlfriend. Um, 
A lot of it has to do with the style of the school. I do like the smaller school rather than the large one. Uh, I like to know every family well. I wanted the family feel. You have a family? You no, I wanted a family feel. Oh, but you have a family. I do have a family. Oh, Mary. Mary. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> when did you know about Ascension needing a principal? Ascension contacted me in the fall of, where are we now, 2013. Oh, yeah. um, they asked me to interview, which I did in December. It was a phone interview. And then uh, at their January voters meeting, they extended me the position. At which point I came and visited um, to check things out. And that was the winter of the snow. So I, the weekend that we came, there was no school the days that we were here. <laughs> so I didn't get to see the school in action. Um, but somehow we made it here. We flew in and flew out with no troubles. Mm -hmm. And um, we decided here? to accept. We moved in June of... 2014. So you have been here. Two, this is my second year, the end second. of my second year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, how are yeah. the kids treating you? They're great. They're groovy, aren't they? They are. I love our kids and our, the families are so supportive of everything we do. What is the um, <clears throat> mission? Well, our mission, mission here is to share the gospel with the kids and to, to, to encourage them to become lifelong learners. Um, we want to support them educationally, but also spiritually and socially um, as well. So we want to make them well-rounded Christian citizens. And the vision? You know that. Our vision is similar. Um, where we want to, <laughs> and I'm going to read over your shoulder there. Yes, we want to make them effective thinkers and productive citizens in the world. So, by giving them a Christ-centered point of view. Have you heard back from any of the kids that have graduated over the years? Here, um, how they're doing in high school? You know, I, we've had a few drop in. Uh, they're not familiar to me because I wasn't here. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that we've had some drop in. Um, and they always just talk about how much Ascension has fostered their love for learning and uh, growing in Christ. How many teachers do we have here at Ascension? We have <clears throat> seven teachers and two preschool teachers and a teacher's aide. You looking for more teachers? or? Um, we do have some full-time teachers that will not be returning for various reasons. Mm -hmm. We do um, have, have a voters meeting tonight to mm -hmm. talk about filling those. Yeah. Um, we also are in need of a part-time middle school teacher for next year. And preschool teachers, we need some preschool teachers for the next school year. Um, going to our church, I noticed within the last couple of years we have been here. We've been the same here. You came. A um, lot of kids. Yeah. A lot of kids. Mm -hmm. Little babies, they grow up. And yeah. There you go. Yeah. A fresh batch every year. That's right. right? That's right. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> What are the age requirements to enter school? Sure. We follow the state of Indiana requirements. So a student must be five by August 1st to enter kindergarten. Um, what about so preschool? Well, preschool, we have a three-year-old preschool and four-year-old preschool. We're a little more lenient on that with the parents' understanding that the child must be five by August 1st for kindergarten. So um, sometimes we get ones that are a little bit younger or a little bit older, but they may repeat four-year-old kindergarten again mm. until they're ready. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. um, kindergarten, uh, to the, what grade is this? We are uh, preschool through eighth grade here right. at Ascension. So they start at five and leave it by 13 or 14? 13 or 14, 13 depends, or 14. On, depends on when, on when their birthday old. is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pretty good school, eh? I love it. Yeah, good teaching. Absolutely. Solid, Great teachers. Solid doctrine. Yes, ma'am. Yep. All of our teachers are um, either called teachers or eligible for a call or um, are willing to work on a colloquy, which what is... What background, um, what background do the teachers have to have? Qualifications? For? Well, they need to be um, certified by the state of Indiana, which means they've 
come through a recognized education program. Um, Ascension really holds dear the fact that they're that our teachers are Lutheran trained, um, which basically means they have extra theology credits and they know our doctrine and are able to speak clearly about so, it. So the teachers have to be Lutheran, period. Um, our teachers, yes. So they would be able to. Yep. Yeah, it's logical. Yep. Um, this is the first year that our members have ever had to pay tuition just because costs continue to rise um, mm -hmm. and we keep adding teachers to the building because we have more kids. Um, and so our members um, have a small amount of tuition. We and about eighty-five percent of our students are members, so that's wonderful. Um, we also hope that they're supporting the mission of the church through their weekly offering as well. Yeah, it helps. And then we have non-member tuition that's a um, competitive to the area, but still less than what it costs to educate a child. Yes, in our sponsors or. Um, we participate in the yes. Indiana Choice Scholarship, which is basically the voucher system. So there's a financial component to that, whether or not you meet the, the qualifications for the Indiana Choice Scholarship. We also work with the scholarship granting organization, also called SGO, um, and, and take care of needs that way. But because of the, the requirements of both of those, we have to be very consistent. We just can't hand out scholarships willy-nilly, it has to be um, some, a, applicable to all students, not just a selected few. Do you have seminary discounts and grants available? We have lots of seminary families that, that attend here. The um, SGOs and the voucher programs also apply to them. As I mentioned earlier, we have to be consistent whether they're seminary families or not. Mm -hmm. So we have a sp consistent format in which we apply any sort of So they have to apply for these? Mm -hmm. Yes, and oh. they have to meet certain criteria, absolutely, mm -hmm. yep. So for preschool, you do not offer discounts or grants? Preschool has no discounts, no. Um, preschool is an optional program. You know, I, I recognize that lots of families need to work, um, but it's still, it's an optional program, and so we, we don't have any discounts for the preschool program. So you have an enrollment fee. I'm not going to ask how much. But. Yep, would you? Uh, an enrollment fee basically secures the spot, and it, then it also allows us to know how many we're counting for because we need supplies every year. I need new handwriting books every year. So it's nice to know early how many students are going to be in the class because I place orders in May for yeah. a school that doesn't start until August. So, so by what time do the people have to enroll? We start our re-enrollment process in January. Um, most of our families are already re-enrolled for next year, and it's only the beginning of March. So um, the sooner the better. So before May. That would be nice. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Our unif unicorns. Unicorns. Uniforms. <laughs> we have a standardized Sorry. dress code. Well, I don't tend to call it a uniform. It's more I call it a standardized dress code. Huh. Um, what do you have to wear? It means that we have khaki or navy blue bottoms, um, whether that's shorts at a certain time of year, pants, skirt, skirt. They're allowed shorts? They are allowed shorts um, from so April really to October. Uh -huh. Yep. It's been warmer in March and we've had some kids wearing them recently um, and we've had to remind them that our policy does say April through we, you know, when October. We, kids, we always had to wear skirts. And Dresses and yes. No pants at all. Right. Any of those days, girl. Sure. Mm. Um, but then we allowed any solid color polo on the top. Oh, so oh. red or whatever. red, pink, purple, green, white, any solid color polo on the top. We do have a school polo. It's maroon and it says Ascension Lutheran School on it. We use that for field trip days and special events. So people will know who we are and where are, we're from. You have their name tags and all. Um, mm. It has the school logo on it. So. So they know that if that kid wanders off. Right, they're from Ascension. Exactly. Right. Shoes and yeah. shoes are, we pretty much encourage tennis shoes. Um, tennis shoes, yep. We have, that way they don't, they don't forget them for recess or gym class. Um, we and they have, have to have white soles, no, no black soles. That's the preference, correct. Yeah, because they don't scratch up. Scuff. Scuff. Yeah. So, uh, when do the classes begin in September, is it? No, ma'am. We start August. in August. August. Yep. 
Um, next year's calendar has us starting August 10th of 2016, 2016. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll be out before Memorial Day. So we would rather tack on the days at the beginning of the year than at the end, because by the end, everybody's ready to be done. So, and in the fall, everybody's excited to go. So we would have that, rather have extra days in the fall than in the spring. Yeah, school delay when there's a lot of snow or fog. Uh, this year we've only had four school de delays and no days off, which has Ooh. been nice. Yeah. Cool. Um, but yes, if there's bad weather, um, then it's uh, an issue for families to get in. Um, oftentimes we have school when other schools don't, mm -hmm. and I gently remind the parents, if you are not feel it's unsafe to be on the roads, then don't come. Um, but if we can, if the teachers can get here, we want to be here to educate those that can get here. So tell me, um, the kids, how, what's the territory? I mean, how far away do they live from the school? Sure. I would say we draw from probably, um, a seven or eight mile radius of the school. Um, there, Fort Wayne has so many Lutheran schools that, yes, we do have families that drive by others to get here. Um, but situate, being situated on the north side, most of our families are from the central to north central um, Fort Wayne area. Is uh, Ascension accredit accredited? Yes, absolutely we are accredited. Um, this year was a renewal cycle. So starting last summer, um, we had a core team working on um, now I'm going to blank out, a self-study, there we go, a self-study um, in which we basically use the accreditation tool to see how we're doing here. And then this January, we had a visiting team come to validate all of that information. Yeah. Um, they have recommended us for reaccreditation. And thank you. In uh, June, our district office will affirm that. And then in July, the synodical offices will also reaffirm that. And we'll have five years before we have to go through the cycle again. Oh, every five years. Every five years, correct. So what kind of lunch program is available? Our lunches are through Fort Wayne Community School. So we have what's called satellite lunches. Um, they send over, they take care of it. They send over menus. Uh, it's not really catered. It comes prepackaged. And we have um, a site manager here who warms everything up and then serves them. But they come prepackaged, so they get a hot pack and a cold pack. And they get the right kind of food. They don't get junk food. Correct. They meet the, <laughs> the government, federal government guidelines, yes. And is there before and after school care available? We do have extended care. Our morning extended care starts at 715 our school day doesn't start till eight, or at, that's when kids can go in the building. And after school, we're available till 5.30. Um, families don't have to sign up necessarily. Whoever is left in line at, at 3.25 is who gets sent to extended care and families can come push, pick them up. And then we bill according to what they've used, not, to according, not according to what they think they might use. Well, so. principal Mary Thank you You're so welcome. much for being on my show. My pleasure. This is my favorite church, <laughs> Ascension Lutheran Church here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I'll see you next week. God bless. Oh.